Santiago Calatrava was born in Valencia in 1951. Calatrava grew up in an established family involved in agricultural exports. Though Calatrava's father was oriented towards commercial activities at work, he loved art and took his son to see Spain's greatest museum, the Prado in Madrid. Calatrava started to show an interest in sculpture and drawing, and by the time he was eight, he had enrolled in art classes in Valencia. Santiago Calatrava was initially interested in becoming an artist. However, his idea never came off and he ended up studying architecture in Technical University of Architecture, Valencia. Calatrava continued to acquire qualifications by going on to study post-graduation in urbanism before heading off to Federal Technology University in Zurich between 1975 and 1979, where he obtained a PhD in Civil Engineering. In Zurich, Calatrava met and married his wife Robertina, a law student and later lawyer who has played an important role in managing his far-flung business enterprises. A glimpse of his growing architectural imagination appeared when he and some other graduate students designed and built a swimming pool in the rotunda of the school's main building. Transparent, donut-shaped and suspended above the floor, it allowed passerby to watch swimmers from below. In 1981, after completing his doctoral thesis on the foldability of space frames, he started his architecture and engineering practice. Beginning as a new young architect was difficult, and Calatrava spent several years entering competitions and trying to get his name about. After much hard craft, in 1983, his design was chosen for the Stadelhofen railway station in Zurich, which launched him into the limelight. The following year, a commission to design Barcelona's Bach de Roda Bridge served as an important moment in his career and led to many more bridge commissions. Today, Calatrava's bridges add fineness and sophistication to many of Spain's most iconic cities as well as numerous international locations. They have become landmarks and tourist hotspots worldwide and the most recognized symbol of Calatrava's work. In 1989, he extended his architecture practice by opening a Paris office and two years later, another in his hometown of Valencia. Since he was awarded the Auguste Pere International Union of Architects Prize in 1987, Santiago Calatrava has gone on to receive numerous medals for his work as well as 13 honorary doctorates. His designs, which take inspiration from nature, provoke strong reactions. They are either loved or loathed. Calatrava, who considers himself above all an artist, a sculptor, says, An architect is also a philanthropist. In the past, cities were designed to last. Today, they provide an insight into the soul of the lost civilization that built them. So if architecture is the most tangible sign of a civilization, how then to preserve the sacred nature of a location? How do you give a sense of sacredness to a particular location and thereby to life itself? According to the Roman architect Vitruvio, architecture should have three qualities. Utility, beauty and solidity. Utilitas, venustas and firmitas. By firmitas, he also meant perenitas, in other words, permanence in time. In that context, our vision is very much influenced by the view in the Bible that there is something divine in everyone.
That's to say, a belief in the idea that every person has something special, sacred and divine in them. Something which allows us to better understand architecture. And that also means that at its very core, architecture is more than just buildings. It gives a sense of the heritage of a particular time. It's a time capsule. One of the most exciting innovators of modern architecture, Calatrava, takes his inspiration from natural and human forms of using them with his carefully chosen materials to create aesthetic harmony. His style is both unique and symbolic, recognizable the world over for the sense of movement that he manages to capture in a stationary object. Calatrava makes his architectural structures so interesting by calling on his innate knowledge of engineering to use the technical structure of his creation as the basis for his design. Think long, sweeping lines, stark white materials and a flawless use of glass and light. For me, Santiago Calatrava is an inspiration because he is a prolific sculptor and painter claiming that the practice of architecture combines all the arts into one. Trained in art, architecture and engineering, the Spaniard seamlessly blurs the boundaries between the disciplines creating structures that are also sculptures. His style is very personal and derives from numerous studies he makes of the human body and the natural world. Santiago Calatrava constantly moves between the United States and Europe. One of an elite group of architects whose work is an almost instantly recognizable global brand, Santiago Calatrava has been described as a poet of glass and steel. Such large-scale infrastructure projects are very controversial, for example, the locks in Venice, the Messina Bridge or the high-speed rail link in northern Italy. What's your opinion? There are two aspects here. On the one hand, there's the environmental aspect, which has to be respected. These days, that's a bigger consideration than it was 30 or 40 years ago. Nowadays, you have to produce designs that are better looking, better adapted to their environment, and with less of an impact on their surroundings. I think that the cost of these projects is nothing compared with the millions, even billions, and thousands of billions that's being put in to save a paper economy, a purely administrative economy. A tradition is always an evolution, says Calatrava, who counts the architects Antonio Gaudi and Eero Saladin as major influences. He says, you can look back, but one of the bases on which I build is to push ahead. So this idea of A, the winner is... The winner is turning torso. Turning torso! Calatrava's style has been heralded as bridging the division between structural engineering and architecture. The last uh, verse of the Psalm uh, 150 says that everything who breathes prize the Lord. If the obelisk breathes and if the obelisk uh, is alive, uh, should also, uh, this is my deepest wish, praise the Lord. In the hope that the people who arrive here understand the message which behind it, which it is a message of uh, gathering, welcoming, it's a message of harmony, it's a message of belief in the future, and from my side also is a message of respect, devotion, and love, for the Technium and for Eretz Israel. Calatrava also has many future designs, such as the residential tower on South Street, located in New York. Each cube is an apartment building starting at $30 million. Calatrava will continue creating beautiful works of art as the world falls in love with his designs over and over again.